In our previous videos, we wrote some sorting algorithms, we went through bubble sort, selection sort, insertion sort, and we kind of tested them. Okay? We, we basically sorted some small arrays and made sure that they came out in proper order. It would be really nice to verify that these things work, possibly with larger arrays, or do something that was a bit more robust than, than what we did. So we should talk about how we would go about testing sorts, some of the different approaches that we might take. So we have our different sorts in here. I would like to define another function called isSorted. And isSorted is going to take an array of doubles, because that's what we're working with, and it returns a Boolean. Now, how are we going to write this? How do we tell if an array A is sorted? Well, if it's sorted, every element will be less than or equal to the element after that. And so how do we express that? It turns out there are a number of ways that you can do this. You can do this with a for loop that goes through on the indices. You can do this with a while loop that also counts through on the indices. The advantage of the while loop would be that it could break out as soon as it found something that was out of place. So it might potentially be faster if the thing is not sorted, whereas the for loop is going to run through the whole thing. We could also use some of the methods that are part of collections. And I think it's just worth seeing this to remind you of the type of, ex of expressiveness that we have with the various higher order methods and just the methods in general that are available to us. So the first cut when doing this would be something like, I want to take my array A and I want to zip it with a dot tail. Now, this is an approach that we've seen previously. And basically what this does is it takes the first element and the second element and matches them up in a tuple. And then it takes the second and the third, and the third and the fourth, and the fourth and the fifth. And that way we have each element and the one after it. And so this is going to be true if for all tuples that we make in that way, t dot underscore one is less than or equal to t dot underscore two. Okay, let's see if I have that typed nicely. Now we happen to have a little array ARR here, and we can check to see if it's sorted, and this says true. Might be nice to test it on something that's not sorted. How about we call it on just a new array with 10 elements selected at random? Well, it was possible that could have come back true because it's possible the random numbers could be in order, but with 10 random numbers, that was a very unlikely outcome. So we get a false for that. It turns out this really isn't a very efficient way of saying this. While the for all does break out as soon as it finds something that's false, the problem is that by making a tail and by actually calling zip, we are creating in kind of intermediate collections. A somewhat faster way to express this would be to not do the zip and use, that should be a comma, not a dot, to use zipped, which is a method of tuples, and that way, instead of creating a new collection, we just run through them all. And this takes a function that takes two values, I'll call them a and b, a is in the first, is a is the first element, b is the element that's after it, and I want to return a less than or equal to b, of course, because I'm using a and b in order, I could also express this as underscore less than or equal to underscore. Comment out that first version. Check, ARR is still sorted. Random numbers are still not. That's somewhat more efficient. Uh, it turns out that the use of tail here is still creating a collection for us, um, which might not be what we want. Uh, there are ways that we could try to get around this. 
but we're not going to worry too much about the efficiency here. One thing about this method is that this method is only telling us if the array is sorted, which actually doesn't mean that it's a sorted array of the original values. To illustrate this, I'm going to create a simple array that happens to be sorted. That's sorted. It turns out that if we had a bug in our code and we wound up taking several of the, of the values out of the array and replacing them with other values, we could still have the array in sorted order. So for example, instead of doing a sort, we could just obliterate the entire array with whatever the first value was, and hey, look, the result is now sorted. Uh, it's not the numbers that we had to start with. It's not what we wanted from them. So then the question is, well, how would we tell that? How would we tell that we had uh, you know, the, the actual initial values that we still had in there? Well, we could do that kind of in a way that's somewhat inefficient, where we go through and for each element, we check to make sure that it, each element in the original array, we check to make sure that it still exists in the other array. Uh, we do have some uh, nice methods on collections like diff that would do this for us. So if we call diff between two collections, we should get back nothing if they contain all the, the same elements. So if they have the same length and they have a diff. Uh, an interesting alternate approach to this is to not test our sorts independently, but test them relative to one another. And this is one of the things that I will have when I'm trying to teach my students how to test their code. One of the challenges they often face is how do you go through and make sure that something is doing the right thing? And it turns out that a good way to do this is if you happen to have two implementations of the same problem. So for example, we write a bubble sort and we write a min sort. And then we take one array and we make a copy of it and we sort that array with both bubble sort and min sort. How could we check that the sorts are working? Well, it's not a perfect way to check, but if, you, if the arrays that they produce are equal, there's very good odds that they worked. Because while it is possible to mess up bubble sort and min sort in such a way that they are both wrong, but they both produce the same output, turns out that type of thing is very unlikely. When you mess up your algorithm, you typically get a particular type of error. It's very hard to mess up two algorithms in exactly the same way so that they give you the same output. So just something to keep in mind when you're thinking about how to test code is sometimes it might just be nice to have something that's really easy that you feel pretty darn good about and then maybe something that was a little bit harder that you know, you're not as sure about and compare their outputs. Of course, there are also, in the case of sorting, there are also libraries that do this, so we could always take the value that we get from this and compare it to what we would get if we call sorted on it. So that's some thoughts on testing and how you can verify that your sorting algorithms are doing what they're actually supposed to be doing.